Hello, ABE 202 BME 295. Welcome back to Vapor Liquid Equilibrium. So last time we finished with um, this uh, right here, this uh, TC, VC, and PC um, that gives us relationships for A and B that we use in the van der Waals equation of state. I've rewritten the van der Waals equation of state right here where I'm highlighting and the, the parameters A and B are are right here and what we did last time after deriving and defining these critical this critical point pc tc and, and vc where this uh, material has the transition uh, please see the, 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 the previous video for um, a refresher on that we're defining new variables called the reduced pressure which is a ratio of the actual pressure and relative to its to its um, critical pressure, the reduced volume, which is the ratio of its uh, of its actual uh, volume to the critical volume. Okay, and then the reduced uh, temperature TR, which is the temperature relative to the reduced to the to the um, uh, the critical temperature. You can go back to your original variables by simply multiplying through your reduced times the critical. Now this becomes useful, and it's another. This is the third time in the course that we've been uh, through the process of non-dimensionalizing uh, equations, and we do this because then you can solve the problem once, and then have that solution for many other types of problems. So the goal here is to get a new equation. Uh, for van der Waals with uh, these, in terms of these reduced uh, quantities, P over PC, V under bar over VC, uh, and T over TC. So if we just make the substitutions in for A and B in terms of our, our critical um, pressure, temperature, and volume, we can rewrite the van der Waals equation um, like this. 9 VC R T C over 8 all over V under bar squared uh, times V under bar minus VC under bar over 3 and this is equal to R T. Now if we take this entire equation left and right hand side and multiply through by 8 over T C and do a little rearranging, we can start to see how we can simplify this into a new type of into a new equation. So this becomes now 8 times pressure over R times TC plus 9 VC over V under bar squared times V under bar minus VC under bar over 3, okay, um, and this is equal to 8 times T over TC. I decided to divide through by R there as well, um, so the R uh, that was here is now gone, and the R that was here is now gone. I mean, we have an R that is now in the denominator of uh, this first term. So what can we do next? We still have pressure kind of hanging here by itself. We don't have the right volume ratio here. Volume is hanging out here by itself. So what, what, what we can do is just a trick by multiplying the entire thing by one, essentially. If we take, there's many ways to get one. And one of the ways to get one is to have VC under bar over three times 3 over VC under bar. Now, if we do that, think about um, sticking this term in right here uh, and multiplying it through. What happens is a, bit of, is a bit of algebra, but you can show yourself that this becomes uh, P over PC plus 3 times VC under bar over V under bar squared 
times 3 times v under bar over vc under bar minus 1 equals 8t by tc. I made use of one more thing, and that's that the fact that the compressibility factor um, uh, is equal to 3 eighths, which gets rid of the 8 and the 3 on that term. So rewriting this in terms of the new reduced pressure variables, we have PR plus 3 over VR under bar squared. Okay, times 3 VR minus 1 equals 8 times TR. So with TC, PC, and VC, uh, the 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 critical point on your original graph now occurs at TR PR VR equals one. Shifts the the critical point. Let's draw this. Actually, let's cheat and on my notes, let's uh, copy and paste this whole entire diagram from up here, down below, uh, and use that to, to just show what the, what the, how the diagram looks exactly the same. Huh. Um, but uh, the, the specific labels are, are what changes. So if we do this, this now uh, corresponds, let me get rid of all this nomenclature for TC, because now our axes are different. Oh, it doesn't let me erase that. Huh, okay, no worries. We will simply uh, eliminate this entire thing and um, just redraw the important pieces. Hmm. Okay, scrolling down. So, we have this, these axes now, and you can see up above, before this was uh, pressure and volume. But now we're going to relabel these axes as reduced volume here and reduced uh, pressure here. And we still have all of these same regimes that we had before. We have the ideal gas equation-like regimes, and we have this transition regime that is right here. And then we have the regime where we have these squiggles in the line that are the necessary pieces for having more than one face. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So this point here, which used to correspond to TC, PC, VC, now corresponds to TR equals 1, PR equals 1, VR equals 1. And if you know the TCPC and, and VC values for your material, you'll instantly know that just by calculating in your head what TR, PR, and VR are, you'll instantly know the general behavior. So this is instance TR greater than 1. Uh, if your temperature is greater than, you know, um, then that critical value, then you're going to have an ideal gas behavior or more ideal gas behavior where you have only one volume for any given pressure and uh, that follows a 1 over V R type of behavior. Or TR less than 1. Ah, did I say 0? That should be a 1. TR greater than 1, TR less than 1, and then TR equals to 1 is this transition. So this is a very convenient way to instantly just reference your, the, in, your, in your mind the, the relative uh, value of the temperature, pressure, and volume to the critical temperature, pressure, and volume to know what kind of regime you're operating in without even having to, to, um, to think about it very much.